Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from the Arkells, titled High Noon. So, okay, I mentioned in the past that rock music never really died out in the mainstream in Canada, at least not in the same way that it did in the United States. Maybe it was the fact that the CRTC content restrictions dictating that radio had to play at least some Canadian content, and more that it happened to be rock and pop than in terms of hip-hop or country. But the ultimate result of it is that there's a burgeoning Canadian rock scene that has thrived over the past four or five years, even as the pop-rock boom collapsed everywhere else. And it's not just Canadian rock either. A steady diet of acts like Metric and Tokyo Police Club have meant that Canadian radio is just more receptive to some indie rock acts, which has meant songs like Come With Me Now by Congos have broken into the top 10 up here where they really do struggle south the border. Now I could brag here and say that the reason that rock never died up here in the mainstream is this because we just got better rock than down south, but honestly we've got our fair share of crap up here too. Headley, Favor Drive, Simple Plan, you get the picture. But I, however I want to talk about a band today that definitely does not fall into the crap category. The band is called the Arkells, a Hamilton-based band who dropped their fast-paced, rough-edged debut in 2008 and immediately started attracting some really serious buzz, at least up here. And it wasn't just the sticky, melody-driven riffs or Nick Dicka's prominent bass or the songwriting that was a lot more clever and nuanced and yet shockingly earnest and steeped in more Canadian imagery than you would expect, but the band had a knack for ridiculously catchy hooks that effectively sealed their fate and made a pop music turn inevitable. Now that turn happened on their second album, Mission left, a breezier album that brought in more keyboards and a hazier brand of production that recalled nothing less than a rougher, louder, faster, less subtle version of the war on drugs. And yeah, that's a high compliment indeed, given what I thought of their last album. And it really helps matters that the songwriting on that second album was just as strong. Excellently framed road movie of a record that showed songwriting can get both personal and very political. And thus, you can bet that I was really psyched to dig into their third album when I heard about it titled High Noon. So I took a couple of listens to it. How'd it turn out? Ugh. This is frustrating. Because Why High Noon by the Arkells, it's good. It's nowhere near great. It's probably their weakest release thus far. To say that I was disappointed after several listens to this record is a bit of an understatement. This is one of my most hotly anticipated releases thus far this year, and it really did not pan out nearly as well as I was hoping. And what's worse is that I can point to exactly the areas that just did not work. And I can still acknowledge that on a certain level, the album's not bad. It does have some parts that'll be make it salvageable for some listeners, but really it just did not click for me, and I know exactly why. So, okay, let's start with the instrumentation and production. And at first glimpse, it seems like the most natural progression for the band towards a defiantly pop music sound, especially reminiscent of the guitar and synth back pop music of the 1980s, and even more so of that Bleachers album, Strange Desire, that just gets better every single time I listen to it. The drums are supplanted somewhat by drum machines, the guitar and keyboard are cleaner than ever, and the choruses are supported with some pretty solidly catchy melodies that are pretty damn memorable. And there are moments instrumentally on this record that I really did like. The opening keyboards on Cynical Bastards, the synth line on Dirty Blonde, the noisy crescendo on Hey Kids into the Chorus, the fast-paced strumming that builds into the melody on the chorus of Leather Jack that I really liked, the heavy chugging riffs balanced out against the piano on Crawling Through the Window, probably the best song on the album because it's unlike anything else on this album, and that richly orchestrated darkness of that really odd album closer systematic, just a weird song to end the album with. Now let me stress, the album does get better as it proceeds more towards its rock roots in the back half of the record, and that has less to do with the composition and more to do with the production. Tony Hoffer's choice to go with a more lush instrumentation does occasionally pull some really good dividends, especially on Systematic, but for the most part, it de-emphasizes the pulsing, textured bass lines that used to be the biggest highlights of the Arkells, which makes a lot of the songs lose even more of their edge and the mix to come across as shallow and top-heavy. Now, I'm not a fan of the reverb-heavy, percussion-driven production attempting to make everything sound heavier and more meaningful that's infecting modern indie rock like a plague, but this is the exact opposite and it really does not play to the shift in lyrical focus on this album. And that's where the lion's share of this conversation is going to take place because there's a marked shift on this album towards subject matter that is, for lack of better words, simpler. Like most pop records, High Noon is going for big and broad. Powerful emotions driven forward by stark moments of clarity and less of the dusty, complicated nuance that characterized their previous releases. Now let me stress something. In theory, 
I don't have any issues with this. Andrew WK has proven time and time again that going broad doesn't exactly have to mean your music sucks, even for pop music. And the Arkells naturally very earnest delivery would be a solid fit for that, along with their focus on melody and a penchant for dramatic and huge sounds and moments. But here's where we move into tricky territory, because Max Kerman has gone on record saying this record was going to aim to be more outwardly political. And this is where we step into my hard and fast rule about political leanings on art. The best of it is is well framed, has nuance, and has populism. In other words, the artist knows what the hell they're talking about, places it in the right context, and is standing with the people. Even some simply just good political records can get by by picking two of those options. You want to lecture people instead of standing with them? Fine, just know what the hell you're talking about and make sure that your tone makes sense. You want to go broad in order to make a larger point? You need to place yourself with the people and you got to be a little bit careful about what you say and how you say it. And really, the Arkells, just, they just don't execute here. By going broad, sounds like fake money, they can work, but it needs more detail and context and poetry to be something beyond just a screed against the upper class that I've heard a thousand times before. Systematic is a voice from the inside that's actually a fair bit more effective on this album. Cynical Bastards is a call to the people who live in their hometown of Hamilton to look up and break out of the pessimism in the economically disenfranchised parts of that town. And there are details in the verses that reflect some righteous populism, but the chorus is basically a lecture trying to call them out to be better. And just the tone here between the music and the lyrics just does not work for me. Now the song that really raised my eyebrows for me though was What Are You Holding On To? A song calling out for someone for being self-obsessed and making reckless decisions and saying only God can judge me, a phrase that apparently Max Kerman hates. And look, I don't like that phrase either, but you open a pretty big floodgate with songs like this that are almost daring the listener to judge Max Kerman's lyrics in return because with this album, who is he to judge someone in this particular regard? Because here's the thing. If the album was solely political statements and the rhetoric displayed a little bit more nuance, it could have potentially worked. But that's not the case. The other half of this record is much more straightforward love and relationship jams, most of which honestly are nowhere near the Arkells best off their previous records. The thing is, when the Arkells wrote relationship songs in the past, they were complicated emotionally and lyrically. And High Noon goes for more simpler pictures, which could work if the songwriting wasn't so occasionally quite clumsy as Max Kerman tries to dumb it down, but his densely worded style of writing just doesn't lend itself to these kind of simpler tracks. Now granted, the Arkells do land a few hits here. Leather Jacket kind of works from the perspective of the friend who constantly bails out a train wreck, but all we see of the picture is the, of this train wreck, and we start wondering why this guy keeps picking her up by the payphone. Because really, the more you think about it, there's no good reason for it. Now the one song I really did love was Crawling Through the Window, as I said before. A song showing how two guys get over a breakup together and find friendship. It's got a certain raw, detailed charm in the lyrics that feels grounded in real and not the broadly sketched stories on the rest of the album that the Arkells attempt to tell. So you know what? In the end, look guys, I don't dislike this album, but I want to like it more. It's more consistent than Strange Desire by Bleachers. I'll give it that, but it doesn't have that record's tremendous highs or the sheer populist swell of, say, The Black Market by Rise Against. It's also a sign that while pop music suits the Arkells fine on a certain instrumental and composition, basis, they could probably do more and be more memorable if they stuck with rock and production that actually supports that. So you know what? In the end, I'm giving this album a 6 out of 10 and a very tentative recommendation. It's not a bad record, but the Arkells have written better songs, so check out their previous two albums first. And where High Noon goes for that clarion moments of great reckoning, it doesn't quite show all the light. <sighs> So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, yeah, I'd be more than grateful. Do you guys actually happen to know that I don't just write music reviews? Actually, if you want to take a look at this coming out, there's a new anthology that features a romance story written by myself. The anthology is titled Love, Loss, Longing, a romance anthology. You can find it on Amazon in ebook form right now. Featured a lot of great stories from a lot of fantastic writers. So definitely go check it out. My story titled making dreams untrue. Definitely worth a read from you guys. Outside of that, if there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give them a listen. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.